Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, bludgeon of anonymization. Some of us spend too much time trying not to be who we really are. Those folks want to leave behind their real-time lives and begin to become something they are not in real life. And so they go online to spread hatred and cruelties, all in the name of someone else, all in the goal of undermining reason and comedy, and to propagate the results of an undiagnosed psychological problem. We see anonymization in online proxies and VPNs, virtual private networks. We don't want people to know our real IP address or who we really are. So we can be free to post nasty things online or wreak havoc on the internet or just be able to perform some other dastardly sexual deed, all online, without intervention, done in the dark, hiding from the reality police. Twitter, we know, has a terrible online abuse problem, helped along by anonymization. But there are two things Twitter could do right now, today, to stop all the nasty cruelty while still leaving the abnormal egg names alone. First, let us own our timeline. Anyone can post to it. But if someone says something nasty or unwarranted, we can delete that tweet from our timeline. So nobody visiting our timelines will have to see that kind of nastiness. That posted hatred can live on that anonymous person's timeline. But we will not allow them to tread on our timelines any longer. Second, we need the right to ban people from our timelines. This is the next logical step in safety beyond blocking. Blocking isn't a ban because others can still see blocked user tweets on your timeline. You are banning that bad person from your timeline forever. They cannot see you. They cannot engage with you. And they cannot put anything you don't want on your timeline ever again. Now, those two simple changes would make a huge difference in the enjoyability factor of Twitter. And people can begin to finally feel safe again in their own harbor. Your timeline should be your own and maintained and pruned and reconstructed by you. But Twitter wants an open cesspool where anything and everything goes. And that's why nobody is interested in buying Twitter and bringing it home. Because you can't take that kind of filth into a clean house. The anonymization of violence is also a grave matter of importance across the world, especially as expectations realign and tribal hatreds are resurrected and reborn into modern myths and memes of belonging. 
If we are not our face, then we are definitely our DNA. But you can't currently trace DNA via video surveillance. So hiding the who of you while in public is vital to the purveyors of personal violence that happens live in real time. And so we are our faces and our hatreds, and we want to hide one to greet the other. And that is when lines are crossed and blood is shed in an unending rage that only satisfies the anonymous bully, the nameless toad, and the uncivil troll. Anonymous, emotional, or physical violence is not free speech. It is a wretchedness cast upon us all, a virus in need of eradication. In a previous podcast here on Human Meme, we discussed the right-to-be-forgotten laws and that, in fact, you really have no right to be forgotten, especially if you have been cruel and lewd and vicious in your real life and on the Internet. The web remembers you have been warned. In the grand arc of history, the KKK wore white sheets and hoods to hide who they were. And even they knew the shame in the crimes they were actively committing against their communities. And bank robbers covered their faces to get away with what did not belong to them. And yes, we may be our sheets and our hoods and our masks, but we also must be our revelations. The worst American semi-holiday, one that celebrates anonymization for at least an entire week, if not the entire month of October, is Halloween. In costume and with faces painted and hidden behind rubber and glue and colors, or temporarily unrecognizable through disfigurement. The Halloween celebrators of All Hallows' Eve are freed from convention and morality and are set off to wonder and destroy whatever whim or will they feel they need to survive. And their immoral deeds are saved by their masks and face paint, and only the moral among them are out to collect candies and goodies, while the rest of them are on the warpath against civility and civilization. Where are we left as a humanity? as a we-the-people who value free speech, but only when it is tied to a verifiable person. How do we de-anonymize everyone so we cannot hide in the unknown to throw knives and hurl firebombs from behind fences and firewalls? In the United States, and probably beyond, the NSA and CIA and FBI all already know everything about us, thanks to Internet companies, the cloud of us, and our phones and tablets, and they have all been forced into one tiny speculation, put there by the law, to share data and information about us. So the real threat to freedom is this, a concerted government effort set 
to know our private thoughts in public. And we are no longer allowed to hide among us or to preserve our secrets. Are we fooling ourselves into thinking that anonymity still matters? Are we just playing along with the quaint notion of privacy that has never been since the first dit-dahs of Morris Code were sent along unsecured copper wires? It is human nature to boost the ego and stroke the id. And we think we are hiding in plain sight when we are actually standing naked and flayed down to the muscle in the public square. Even when we do terrible things anonymously, we still want credit for them. There used to be honor among the misbegotten to keep quiet and to lull all secrets to sleep. But today, that isn't good enough. Today, people want to feel fulfilled and important. And even if that attention is negative, they can still use that energy to continue to fuel their rage. There's no such thing as bad attention in their mind. They're in it for the adoration of others like them who choose to hide and create active dismay because it fills the hours in a dull day and gives up the thrill of conquering, though falsely, to the demeaned between us who are reaching out but down, and never up, for definition and belonging. It is up to the rest of us to demand accreditation of behavior and to unmask those who try to hide from us in order to unduly mess with the congeniality in our lives. Congeniality we need to survive together. We must do this by requiring accountability in every aspect of life. There's no room for fantasy or staging or requiem pleasing if they are being used to purposefully create contention and chaos in our shared lives? Do we want to know about our neighbors what the government already knows about all of us? That's the dangerous notion of an open society. And some lives are meant to be non-ceremonial and to exist beyond description. And we must protect the right and the moral who behave that way in public and in private. But we cannot tolerate, as a society, those who want to have it always. Closing their identity, opening their whims, and chasing us down the street with their demons. We will unmask them and render judgment on our own without their help and without government intervention because we own our safety and we objectify the privacy of who we are, what we are, and how we wish to become. It all belongs to us alone, unless we choose to reveal the best of us. Because 
the worse in us. We'll be taken care of by our neighbors in the better internment of society. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.